Russia's defense ministry plans to enlist around 20,000 people currently held in pre-trial detention to fight in Ukraine, the investigative news outlet Important Stories Media Outlet reported, citing anonymous military and legal sources. According to a military official who spoke to Important Stories, efforts are already underway to identify who among the thousands of defendants awaiting trial might be fit for military service, with 40% expected to be taken. The enlistment plan reportedly involves selecting 100 defendants from each of Russia's 210 pre-trial detention centers. iStories, citing federal prison statistics, noted that 106,000 people were held in pre-trial detention as of early 2024, though that figure includes individuals under investigation and convicted criminals. The reported plan comes a week after federal lawmakers passed legislation allowing criminal defendants to serve in the military, closing a loophole that previously limited enlistment to convicted criminals and suspects under police investigation. Those changes now face a single vote in the Federation Council, after which President Vladimir Putin is expected to sign it into law. Sources told important stories that authorities are targeting criminal defendants to avoid sparking public unrest with a new wave of mobilization. A source close to the military's general staff said the defense ministry turned to criminal defendants after running out of convicted prisoners willing to volunteer for the war in Ukraine. At the same time, according to one of the lawyers, even before the law was passed in Moscow, there was no shortage of people willing to sign a contract with the Ministry of Defense in any of the pretrial detention facilities. According to lawyer Dmitry Zakhvatov, the penal colony and pre-trial detention center are also recruiting people to sign a contract with the defense ministry by tightening the conditions of detention. Zakhvatov links the active recruitment campaign to the authorities' reluctance to announce a second wave of mobilization, the publication writes. At the same time, there is information that the number of prisoners ready to go to war is decreasing. They say that prisoners are not an endless resource. Therefore, the decision to send defendants to the so-called SVO indicates a decrease in the influx of prisoners to the front. In particular, those convicted under light articles, those who do not have long to do time, are not very eager to go to the front line. After Ukraine pushed the Russian fleet out of the Black Sea, Russia is trying to use mines to limit or stop Ukrainian grain exports. In doing so, the Russians are using drifting mines, which violates international law and could trigger a full-scale conflict with NATO, writes Royal Navy officer Tom Sharp in an article for The Telegraph. According to Sharp, mines are the simplest and some of the most effective seagoing weapons. The reason mines are ubiquitous is because they are cheap, easy to make, easy to deploy and hard to counter. Enemies like Iran and Russia deploy mines freely, including purpose-designed, long-lived drifters, deny they've done it, and then watch the results come in from a safe distance, the expert writes. According to the expert, some navies, particularly European ones, have effective MCM forces, but many do not. This is one of the areas in which the US is surprisingly weak. The larger the area and the lower the risk desired, the longer it takes, with the same required rising exponentially as you approach complete safety. Mines on land are dangerous too, but at least there, once you have cleared an area, it remains cleared. At sea, this is not the case, he explains. So far in the Black Sea, mine strikes have been mercifully rare, says the expert, underlining two cases, when the MV Helt, an Estonian cargo ship, was hit and sunk off Odessa in March 2022, and when the bulk carrier Vysos was hit near the stern while en route to the Ismail port on the Danube. The expert notes that Russia has a number of military ways of launching mines in the Black Sea, from their Kilo-class submarines to their warships to aircraft and helicopters. But the problem with mine laying is that almost any vessel can do it, he adds. Russia's Black Sea mining campaign is not just a war crime, it also runs the risk of triggering a direct war with NATO. Turkey, Bulgaria and Romania are all NATO nations and the grain corridor lies within their territorial waters. The point is, what happens when a free-floating mine drifts into NATO territorial waters and sinks or damages a ship there? That is a NATO Article 5 situation. The alliance members are required to respond to such an attack as if it were an attack on them all. It's only a matter of time before Russian mining causes a major incident which could escalate.